Good morning. Welcome to the Church of the Immaculate Conception in Glenville, New York. Today, we celebrate the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and we have one announcement before we begin. On Monday at 9 a.m., we will have our first public weekday mass. No advance registration is needed. Please come a little early and sign in. Masks are mandatory, and we will follow similar protocols to the weekend. Mass will continue to be streamed as well. We will only have the Monday public masses for the time being. Tuesday and Wednesday will continue to be streamed only. We will have a second collection today for Peter's Pence. If you did not bring it with you, you can mail it to the rectory. Today, we remember those who have died on this date. Alice Marie McGowan, 1980. Levita D. Marshall, 2013. Loretta Dashnaw, 2014. And Dennis Arthur Hull, 2018. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and may perpetual light shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Sisters and brothers, if any of you are visiting us today, we welcome you with great joy. We especially welcome our friends who are online with us throughout the world. Uh, we also welcome those of you who probably are here for the first time in a long time. So uh, God is slowly getting us back together. As we gather today, let's remember to pray for all those who've asked for our prayers, all those gone before us in death, and also let's remember the sick. In, in particular, Jocelyn Papa, David Lott, and Mary Lou Moskov. As we come together as family this morning, our gospel is a familiar story, a wonderful story in all the four gospels, and it's the story of Jesus multiplying the few fish and the few loaves of bread, feeding thousands of people. That miracle continues as we gather around the table of the Lord. Each time the miracle happens again, that God feeds us, this time with his body and with his blood, the true presence of God in our midst. So as we gather today as a Christian community under the sign of the cross, let's pause for a moment to acknowledge our sins and ask God now for pardon and for peace. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to life everlasting. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread? Your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked, and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it's already late. Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the villages and buy some food for themselves. Jesus said to them, There's no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have. And then he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing. He broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about five thousand men, not counting the women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> You 
Usually when I look over my left shoulder in that seat resides Tom Biggis, who has been such a help uh, with masses and cameras and everything else. And Tom this morning is over with uh, Tom and Pearl Glasser, one of our senior couples, and they're having a hard time watching us online. So he's there at their house this morning making a miracle. And so, oh, he's back. <laughs> Hello, Tom and Pearl. How'd it go? Not good. Oh, okay. Well, it takes care of that. <laughs> Can't get rid of them. Back in 1967, I had the opportunity to go to St. Louis, Missouri, to drive from Massachusetts to the great city of St. Louis. And my sister was in college uh, at that time, and so it was an opportunity to see her. But when we got there, the people of St. Louis said, be sure you go down to the river, and be sure you see the arch. Now, they weren't saying go down to the brook. They were saying go down and see the mighty Mississippi. And they weren't saying go see uh, the golden arches of McDonald's, but the fabulous arch that's in St. Louis, Missouri, 630 feet tall. It was quite a feat, quite an opportunity to see that. But it made me think this morning that we like big, we like brassy, and we like bountiful. Look at New York City, you know, look at the Sears Tower in Chicago, the Grand Canyon, the Rocky Mountains. We like big. But yet, in our gospel today, Jesus has a different agenda, and Jesus seems to like small. Remember, just a few weeks ago, we talked about the tiny mustard seed. We talked about the small pearl or the, the treasure that could be buried in the ground. Jesus is never flamboyant and big. He's always looking for the small. And so today, when we look at this gospel, it's important that we look at the setup of the gospel. Because now we hear that John the Baptist had just been killed. Now this was Jesus' cousin. This was the one who baptized him. This is the one that preceded him. And so the next one in line to be killed would be Jesus. And so all these emotions are going on in his heart. And he chooses to go off by himself. And when he goes off by himself, it's usually to connect with his Father in heaven. But when he gets there, he sees that all the people followed him on foot. He went by water. They went by foot. And we are told when he sees this gathering of broken people, his heart goes out to them. He's moved with pity. His whole agenda is changed, and it's no longer about him. It's about them. It's also about the disciples today. I think a miracle takes place even in the midst of the big miracle. Because now the disciples, who are probably hungry themselves, who have just enough provisions to take care of themselves, they look at the crowd and say to Jesus, dismiss them, send them home. Interestingly, Bishop Barron says that the word devil comes from the Greek root word, which means to separate, to divide dismiss. And so they're working almost with the thoughts of the devil to separate them from Jesus. But Jesus comes right back and says, no, let them stay. Let them be a community. Let them get the support they need from us. And then he tells them, what do you have? And all they had was just enough for themselves and now Jesus is asking them, give it away. Take a risk. Watch what I can do. And so the miracle is that they change their heart. They trust Jesus. They know that working with Jesus in a collaborative way will be able to produce much more 
than the few provisions that they have. A change of heart, a change of attitude, that is a miracle in itself. And so today, I think that lesson comes right back to us. Because the disciples, when they looked at this huge crowd, they must have been scared. They must have been overwhelmed. What if this crowd turned wild and got on them and killed them? Or if the crowd stampeded each other? You know, overwhelming to see crowds like that, especially crowds of hung hungry and sick people. And so for us then, it's a lesson in us too being overwhelmed. I know myself, and I'm probably you too, when I see these commercials of children who are starving around the world, gosh, my heart goes out to them, but what can I do? When I see all these racial tensions in our own country, what can I do? Just me. You know, or we see people suffering from COVID-19. What can we as an individual do? Probably not that much. We can pray. We can give our finances. We can support them if we are capable, even by giving of ourselves. But today, Jesus is telling us to count our blessings, to look at the talents that he's given us, and to give those talents away, to share those talents with our neighbor. And when we work in collaboration with Jesus, so much can be done. An abundance of things can come from the talents that we have. So another little point, which might be really simple, but Jesus says, he gives the food to his disciples and says, you distribute, which means that we have to do our part with the talent and the time and the treasure that God has given us we have to do our part. And when we participate in the love of Jesus for one another, a miracle is taking place in our own hearts. So we can never think then that we have nothing. We all have gifts, and we all have to use them. That commercial on TV for Rosie the Riveter, you know, the woman who worked to build planes back during the war, Second World War. Now she's making masks. She's always doing something. We always can participate in the life of the world. The little kid who was concerned about sneakers for our military or uh, out of the United States, he started collecting sneakers for them. He has thousands of sneakers now. You know, or the kids who want to help people by uh, collecting what little money they can by selling lemonade. You know, we see all these things, all this little talent that can produce such great good. So I'd like to leave you this morning with a quote from Henri Newman, who was a great spiritual writer who died about 25 years ago, and he says this, This is the way of God. If we allow it, God will take the small things, like the little love that we have, the little knowledge we have, the little advice we have, the little possessions we have, and he'll multiply them. The more we give them away, the more we discover how much there is to give. Not because of ourselves, but because of the generosity of God. Together we stand for our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And let us offer our prayer in the name of Jesus, whose heart was moved with pity for the vast crowd. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That the disciples of Jesus may distribute the bread of life and the wine of hope to all who hunger, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer that peoples of differing cultures may recognize our common humanity, learn how to sit down together at the banquet of life, and reverence the earth that is home to all. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who lead the nations of this world may listen to the cries of the hungry, and work toward an equitable distribution of resources of the planet, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the labors and generosity of food pantry volunteers, food donors, and soup kitchen workers everywhere may be blessed abundantly, we pray. Lord, hear, hear our prayer. prayer that government may provide a safety net for the unemployed and all who are struggling economically in these pandemic days, especially the undocumented among us. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That our servicemen and women, our first responders and healthcare workers may be kept safe and the seriously ill in our community, gifted with love's comfort and the healing touch of God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That Easter's glorious promise may comfort those among us in mourning and all our beloved dead to come to the everlasting embrace of God's love, especially. Eric Jones, Dennis, Arthur, Hull, Judith Amato, Dan Sleva, Annette Durant, Alfred Mangino, Joe and Kelly Glasser, Father Tom Connery, Helen Smirstick, Selma Jarosimovich, Owen Peterson, and Bill Prisbison. We pray for any and remember at this Eucharist, we pray, pray that our silent prayers rise up like incense before the Lord. We pray, Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of love, you long to satisfy our needs even before we give voice to them. As you fed the multitudes with a few loaves and some fish, Listen now to these prayers of your people, gather to be fed at the table of your holy word. Make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
We pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be found pleasing and acceptable in the sight of God, our Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice of the prayers. The praise and glory of God's name for our good and the good of all of God's holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the gift of this spiritual sacrifice, make us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundation of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set humanity over the whole world and all its wonder. To rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, with all the angels, we praise you and in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the morning dew, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity 
together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and all those who serve the Church. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her devoted spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. My sisters and brothers, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. 
and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those of you who haven't been with us in some time, and just as a reminder to all of us this morning, the ministers will go to you with Holy Communion. And we ask that when the minister says the body of Christ, you respond amen with your mask on. Receive the body of Christ in your hand. And once the minister moves off from you, then you can remove one side of your mask, consume the host, and please put the mask back on. The Prayer of Spiritual Communion. I wish, my Lord, to receive you with the purity, humility, and devotion with which your most holy mother received you, with the spirit and the fervor of the saints.
Sometimes as the weeks go on, we need to look for things that are good news for us. And certainly some good news for us as a parish community today. Um, Bob and Kelly Stiffen became grandparents for the first time to Leonardo Matthias. How do you like that? And David and Janet. So congratulations to you. Let us pray. Accompany, accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. We go in the peace and the love of the Lord. Thanks be to God.